Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer news report. Cheers. Today I'm drinking pure or pure brewed organic lager beer. Yeah, that is a long name. And it's made by Samuel Smith Old Brewery. This is a small independent UK brewery. You know, it's light, it's smooth, and it's a quite good beer. It's quite refreshing. And I could drink this on a hot day or on a cool night with some friends. It's very tasty. I recommend you give it a try. Cheers. I just finished a great book called Sapiens. This is a brief history of humankind, and it's written by Yuval Noah Harari. This is a great book if you like history and learning about how civilizations got started. One big point in the book is trust. Without trust, civilizations would never have happened. For example, we trust that this piece of paper is worth something, right? It's just a piece of paper, though. But since everyone else also believes in it, it actually is worth something. And now, you know, that method still works for gold, our laws, government, religion. You know, so if you're Christian, you believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mother and is the Son of God. And if you're Muslim, you believe that Muhammad met with the angel Gabriel and Gabriel dictated the Quran to him. <laughs> you know, is it just me or did the Mormons steal that from the Muslims, right? Because Joseph Smith met with the angel Moroni and Moroni gave him the gold plates and from the gold plates, he wrote the Book of Mormon. A little bit of a coincidence there, don't you think? All right, getting back to trust. Now, it is because of trust that we believe our leaders, and when things go wrong, we believe that it was a conspiracy. And one of the hot conspiracies today is QAnon. Now, point of clarification, QAnon has made President Trump their leader, but to my knowledge, Trump has never held a QAnon rally or made rules for the QAnon. He hasn't written a book about QAnon. The QAnon has made Trump their leader. But what is QAnon? Well, that's going to be the topic of today's show. I know I should play some spooky music or dim the lights and have candles, but no. I'm just going to take a drink of beer and talk about the show. Cheers. All right, right off the bat, what is QAnon, or who is QAnon? Well, it was a following that started in 2017, and it could be a guy or a girl who was named Q, and that's really all we know. And the anon part of QAnon stands for anonymous, so it's person Q who nobody knows about it, this person's anonymous. Basically, it's a cult. I think that this person, whoever started QAnon, is a fan of Star Trek, right? The Next Generation. If you've been watching that show, then you know that there's a character on that show called Q. This character was like a god and would tease or play tricks on the Enterprise. Isn't that a little of what's happening here? QAnon is similar to Q, like the U.S. is similar to the Enterprise. So we're all being played by the character QAnon. So how are we being played? Well, let's have a drink and talk about what QAnon is professing. Cheers. QAnon is the belief that there is a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who rule the world by controlling everything. So how do they do this? Well, first, you have to control the government, right? So that's Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and, of course, Joe Biden. And then you want to control the media, so that's more of people in Hollywood. So you get your Tom Hanks or Oprah Winfrey, like the FBI, which would be James Comey. Of course, you need money, so that's billionaires like Bill Gates or George Soros. That kind of rounds out everything. So if all these people are in this cabal, how do we fight it? Well, that's where Trump comes in. When he got elected, he said he was going to drain the swamp. Now, according to Q, that didn't mean he was going to drain Congress, but he was going to drain the swamp of evil pedophiles who run this world. Now, how is he going to do that? They call it the storm. And the storm is a battle between Trump and the evil pedophiles that control the world. He was going to round them up and execute them. Now, I need to point out that these are beliefs of QAnon and not quotes from the president, right? President Trump never said any of that. This is what the QAnon followers believe. All I'm trying to do here is explain the beliefs of QAnon, right? Cheers. Now, why didn't Trump do this? Well, according to QAnon, it's because he lost the election. He didn't have time. That's why the QAnon followers say that the election was stolen. The evil cabal runs the government, it runs the courts, and of course, it runs the elections. It sounds plausible, right? I mean, if you're running everything, why not have your candidate win? But if this was true, why was the election so close? Why would you have states only winning by a few thousand votes and Georgia, which won by 11,000 votes? 
I'm not saying that Biden should have won like Kim Jong-un or Putin, you know, win by 95%, but surely you want a bigger margin than what actually happened. You know, why not have Biden win 35 or 40 states instead of 26? Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Cheers. So what's the next step? Well, QAnon said that there would be a military coup on the day of Biden's election and Trump would be put back into office. Obviously, that didn't happen. I know you're thinking, hey, what about the raid on Capitol building? But that wasn't the military. So that wasn't a military coup. Now, for me, this part of QAnon is probably the most believable of all the other parts. I mean, I could kind of say, yeah, it's a little believable, maybe 10%. But again, if you watch my other shows, this wouldn't be enough to make me protest or storm the Capitol building because, you know, if my candidate didn't win. It turns out there's a darker side to QAnon, and that's what's driving the followers crazy. Yeah, we better have a drink for this one. Cheers. Now, it's bad enough that they said there's this cabal of pedophiles, but they say that this group of people, they actually eat children. Now, why would anyone do that? I mean, I get that veal is nice and it tastes great and it's really tender and that it's made from young cows, right, or young calves. But, I mean, kids, really? What's the point? Well, it turns out, according to QAnon, that if you drink the blood of children, you get this drug called adrenochrome and it extends your life. So not only would you control the world, but you would live forever. I've seen pictures of Hillary Clinton, Obama, Bill Gates. They're all getting older. So I don't think this is actually working. And actually, this isn't really anything new, because back in England, in the town of Norwich, during the Middle Ages, there was a rumor that a cabal of Jews that would kidnap Christian children and drink their blood in a religious ritual. You know, those Jews always get blamed for everything. Cheers. Now, another one of the rumors from QAnon is that the COVID-19 vaccine has microchips in it so the government can track you. Well, I've got news for you. If you have a cell phone or a computer, the government can already track you. You know, back when I was an engineer, I worked on the GOES satellite. And this is a system of satellites that stayed in certain spots around the globe to provide positioning information to the government. That's right. Your GPS was a product of the U.S. military. You know, actually, the Internet was also a product of the U.S. military. So if you're using the government system to make your calls or to access the Internet, then, you know, that's going to come at a cost. And that cost is that they know where you're at. It would be a waste of time and a waste of money to put microchips in vaccines when they already have a better system of tracking you. You know, the only people who I know that the government can't track is my parents because they don't have a computer or a cell phone. Maybe they can track them with their cars, right? Because cars now come with GPS. Well, guess what? They got rid of their car because they feel that they're too old to drive. Anyways, as you can say, my parents are off the grid. So, hey, mom and dad, cheers to you. Then another one is 5G cell towers. They say that they emit radiation. Well, it's true. The cell towers do emit radiation, but so much of other things that we have also do it. Your cell phone emits radiation. A radio station emits radiation. Your Wi-Fi router emits radiation. Your microwave, and actually any light bulb in your house, all these products emit radiation. Anything that emits light is giving off some form of radiation. So again, if you're sitting around a campfire drinking beer with your buddies, you're getting radiation from the fire. If you're a type of person that wants to get a pre-summer glow you, and you get into a tanning booth, well, that's actually hitting you with radiation. The difference is that this radiation doesn't hurt us. We're constantly bombarded by radiation in several forms and our body handles it. All right, one more and then that's it. QAnon says that public schools indoctrinate our kids into the system. Well, yeah, isn't that the whole point of school system? Name me one country that doesn't have a school that indoctrinates their kids into their system. Do you think Chinese schools tell their kids, hey, you know what? America has that great system of democracy way better than us. We should change our government from communism to democracy. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Or how about kids in Iran, right? Tell their kids, hey, you know what? Christianity is the one true religion. I don't know why we follow Islam, but, you know, we're not as good as the U.S. No country does that. They all indoctrinate their kids, their system. And that's why immigrants have a hard time whenever they get into a new country. They have to learn a whole new system. Now, do other countries teach their kids math and reading better than U.S. elementary schools? That's a whole new subject for a different show. Cheers.
So what's the big deal with QAnon? There's tons of conspiracy theories out there. What's one more? Well, for the most part, you're right. Most conspiracy theories are a bunch of talk with nothing much happening, but QAnon took it a step further. Now, do you remember Pizzagate? There was a small pizza place working out of Washington, D.C. QAnon said there was a child sex ring being operated out of there. Well, this 28-year-old named Edgar Madison Welsh from North Carolina drove there to save the children and shut down the operation. And nobody got hurt, but he was arrested for discharging a firearm. He got four years in prison. Now, Edgar's intentions were good, but he was misguided. And that's the downside to conspiracy theories. Have you heard of the acronym WWG1WGA? It stands for Where We Go One, We Go All. Now, you know why so many people went into the Capitol building. They were following the conspiracy theory model. A lot of people are going to be arrested for that mistake. So you have to be careful in what you believe. Cheers. So why are conspiracy theories so believable? Well, according to psychology today, about half the population believes in at least one conspiracy theory. So it's quite common. Now, what are the drivers to people believing in conspiracy theories? Well, there's several of them. For one, every now and then, a conspiracy theory comes true, such as Watergate. And that kind of gives credence to all conspiracy theories. And two, there's a common belief that nothing happens by chance or by coincidence. Whatever happens, it was caused by someone or some group, a cabal, if you will, right? Finally, there's feelings of anxiety and uncertainty, and that fuels conspiracy theories. Now, how does one build anxiety or uncertainty in a whole population? Well, for one, you become president and you say that everything is fake news. You can't trust the news. You can't trust the government institutions. Heck, you can't even trust your neighbors. When someone at that level is telling you not to trust anything, you're going to become a little anxious and uncertain. And then you're hooked. Yeah. Cheers. It all comes back to trust. You have to do your homework and figure out what's believable and what's going to get you in trouble. I'm telling you, read the book that I just finished, Sapiens, and learn how trust made us who we are. It's a great book. Well, you can see my beer is almost empty, and that means we're at the end of the show. I hope you took some notes and rewatched those, you know, this show to kind of figure out what parts of uh, uh, any conspiracy theory that you're looking at is true and what isn't true? Anyways, uh, I had a great time doing this show. I hope you liked it. Please click that like button if you did. If you want to contact me, use that email. And, of course, if you want to get notified of new shows, click the subscription button and then click the bell icon next to it. That will notify you when I post a new show. Till then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.